This is going to be a very high-speed uh, story of color management, and the reason we're talking about this is to uh, submit some files to a printer who has a very specific preset that doesn't include any profiles in their preset. And so we're going to look at uh, what profiles are, what they do, and how can we send our files into the printer in a, in a fashion that will give us a consistent color. So this is my key image that I'm going to be playing with. This is a piece of artwork shot. Um, it was shot in RAW mode and when I converted the RAW I gave it the uh, color profile of uh, Pro Photo. And that is the biggest gamut um, color profile that uh, we commonly use in uh, in the Adobe products and I put a set of color bars along the bottom just to kind of see what happens to the very ex uh, extremely bright saturated colors in a file. Uh, now backing up a bit here, what is a color profile? Uh, color profiling is part of color management. What it does is it describes every device. What kind of colors can that device display or print or whatever the device does. And it uses a color model. This um, is looking at the Apple Color Sync um, utility that is installed in the Macintoshes. And this gives us kind of a 3D view of a color space. And the model here has uh, white on top, black on the bottom, and then the color axes that it deals with are the blue to the yellow, and the axis from the red to the green side. And um, right now we're looking at Apple RGB. That's an internal color space that the, uh, the Macs use. Let's look at the, um, the big color space that I just set on my uh, Photoshop document. This is Pro Photo. And this is the very biggest color space that we commonly assign profiles to. Um, is very large and theoretical. This is uh, pretty big. Now this is a RGB color space. The other color space I was working with is um, you have the Adobe 1998 which is smaller and then sRGB which is a bit smaller yet. The sRGB is the kind of default for half worn out PC monitors. If you can fit it within this format, you'll make uh, most of the PC users happy because it'll fit within the capabilities of their monitor displays. So this is the size of uh, like an sRGB. Once again, um, here's the Adobe RGB. The um, Pro Photo is really big. And then compare that to one of the printing uh, CMYK gamuts. So the gamut is how far out in space, how far do the extremes of red, green, and blue, and purple, and all these colors can uh, your gamut, this is a gamut here, this big floating lump is your gamut. How big is your gamut? Now US sheet fed coded, pretty good profile for um, printing. US sheet fed uncoded. Um, the sheet fed coded is the default for X1A. We see a lot of that. Look how small this gamut is. It's got all the colors, but they don't go out nearly as far as um, even sRGB. So an RGB format or color space is much bigger than a printing color space. And one of the worst is the, uh, the newsprint color space. It's really kind of gnarly. Uh, so you got web uncoded, whip coded, sheet fed coded, and uh, the one that we're using with the Lawton printing project that we're working on is uh, Grackle. They, they like this uh, industry standard of Grackle. They calibrate their machines to that. So this is the color profile for that. So it gives you a sense of what a profile looks like. So we'll hide the utility here. Um, Okay, so back here, 
This is the pro photo, very big gamut. Um, it's all downhill from here. I converted another one of these to sRGB. As you see in this document, if I go from sRGB to, to pro photo, almost no difference. You can look at these color bars. You can't hardly see anything changing. That's well within the gamut of both of these RGB formats. Um, here's the Graco. When you start converting to CMYK, look what happens to the extremely bright colors. It, <clears throat> it just can't not handle those extreme saturated colors with CMYK printing ink on paper. The very worst case is the newsprint, and it really flattens out everything. Going back up to the Graco, back to the Pro Photo. So that is um, what these conversions look like. You, you may say, well, how do I get these conversions? You go to Edit, you go to your Convert to Profile, not Assign Profile. You almost never use that unless you have a lost image that doesn't have a profile stuck on it. You Convert to Profile and it says, what would you like to convert to? You have all these choices. And so you can pick your favorite. <coughs> we'll pick none. These are all converted. Okay, so moving on. In an Illustrator, I made myself a document here. I've got a two-page kind of poster document. I stuck all of these sample images in here. So each one of these has its own color profile attached to it. And right now, these three look pretty decent, and the newsprint one is so flat and um, kind of degraded in its display that it's beyond hope, but it's sitting here just to see what happens to it. Now, not that it's a terrible image, it's just this is what you have to do to make it print on newsprint at the best quality you can get out of newsprint. And um, that's just the way it goes. Okay, so what I did was I created myself a set of, um, of PDFs. And when you go into make a PDF, um, for this uh, illustrator, a good way to do this is you say, uh, save a copy, go to the Adobe PDF, get in the process of saving the PDF, and now you have all these choices. And I've downloaded the Lot and Indigo and the Lot and Six Color um, pre-presses or pre presets for their press. So this is what Lawton wants you to use. And if you look through what's going on here, you say, okay, here's compression. They say no, down, no downsampling, uh, do not downsample, no compression. And then the other important thing is here in output, they say no conversion and don't include profiles. So Lawton's doesn't like profiles and they don't want anything converted. So what's going to happen with this is anything you put in your document is going to go straight through. It won't be converted to any kind of common color space, and it's not going to have any compression or um, downsampling done to it. All right. Um, now, if you were to go to something like PDFX standards like X1A, it's going to have compression. It's going to have downsampling to 300, automatic JPEG maximum compression, and it's going to output to the destination preserved numbers, and it's going to convert to the standard for uh, magazine publishing, U.S. Web Coded Swap. That's going to make everything in the document, the RGBs and the CMYKs, it's going to convert them all to one flavor of CMYK here. And um, I'm not going to convert that at the moment. What I did for my samples is I converted one to PDFX1A, I did one to the Lot and Indigo presets, and I did another preset where I went in here and I said, yes, downsample by cubic is the best. It defaults to 300, and I used the same JPEG maximum that X1A uses. And on the output, what I did is I converted to destination preserve numbers like this, and I chose their Grackle standard because that is what Lawton calibrates everything to. And I saved a PDF as that. And um, let's go look at those PDFs I saved. So here in the world of Acrobat, 
Uh, this is the Latin preset one. And so it has these images in here. The, it has no profiles attached. So Acrobat has no idea what these colors are supposed to look like. It's taking its best guess. And it took one guess and it said, okay, everything's displaying the same way. That means that the Pro Photo image, you can see the color in even the face here is quite different from the sRGB and it's quite different from the Grackle image and the newsprint. Well, there's not much hope for it. But that is because it's got no profiles to read. It doesn't know what to do with this color. Okay, now here's the Latin one that I modified. I turned on, uh, convert to a Grackle CMYK, and you can see here that the color is much closer. Uh, there's still a little bit of variation here between these three, but they're all pretty close. It's doing its best to coordinate these. Still the newsprints, the odd man out. Uh, it's pretty bad in the first place. Here's the our favorite X1A for magazine publishing. Kind of the same difference that we see in the Grackle one. It gets all of these pretty much together because it's got a profile on H1 and it can tell what those are supposed to display like. So uh, the moral of the story is if you don't have a profile attached, um, the system doesn't know what to do with it. So going back here to the modded one, now to deal with Lottens, uh, they said, well, we use the Grackle profile. So you want to convert all of your images to the Grackle CMYK. And then if you want to, downsample them. Now these have all been downsampled. Um, a really handy tool here in Adobe is um, the tools for print production. And if you turn on the pre-flight settings here, you can analyze your document and it's going to tell you what sort of colors and uh, what sort of profiles and what sort of image sizes and a zillion other uh, things here. We're going to go look here in the overview section. We're going to look at uh, color space. So this is the modified one. It says color space is coded grackle. And uh, that's what I set it up to. So they all have coded Grackle. Uh, we have 1800 pixel wide CMYK image, 18, and um, the very last one here is the big one, 4288. This is the one on the page with the single image. So these have all been converted to CMYK and they've been downsampled and they have the Grackle color space on them. Uh, now what we would do for Lottens is we would we could take off the include profile option and it would say uh, in color spaces you see device color showing up here. So Lottens doesn't like the attached profile but we would give them the same set of CMYKs and I would prefer to do the downsampling and make my files a lot smaller. Um, if we were to look at the Latin preset one, do the tools, pre-flight, analyze this one, what we'll find is um, that because there was no conversion set up for anything, the results we get are that um, The images are CMYK for the two CMYK images and RGB for the two RGB images, which is going to give their press or pre-press problems because uh, they don't like RGBs. They want CMYKs, and this feeds them right through. So here we have 4288 for this RGB image. We have 4288 for this CMYK image. Because no downsampling was set up, the giant size uh, original images went right through. And uh, if we look at the finder here, and here's my set of uh, files, you can see that the Latin preset PDF is 171.9 megabytes, and the modded one is 7.9 megabytes. So that's the difference between uh, applying that compression and not. If you don't mind uh, sending 179 or 
megabytes through a system and they don't mind ripping that big file, uh, you're not going to lose any quality, but you're going to have very negligible loss of quality on this one, and it's only 7.9. And our old friend, the X1A, is only 6.7. So that is kind of the story here. The motto of this is um, you could get get around this by um, going in and converting all your images to the crackle color CMYK before you place them, and you could also scale them in your documents. Um, I would say that you can get the same result by just using the um, the Latin presets, add the conversion, add the downsampling, add the compression. It will do all of that work to the images and be sure to choose the no profile. This is my version of it that has no profile attached to it. So it won't mess up their their rip by giving it profiles that it doesn't like. But all the images are going to be down to the right size for a speedy workflow. And the other thing you want to watch out for is um, If you're working in Illustrator with vector images, um, it's very important that you have it set to the right color settings. And right now, uh, this one is defaulting to the North American Prepress 2. It's not using um, the Graco color settings. So when you send this image in, you know, if it's a vector image, it's going to be US web coded and not the Graco. So I would recommend that you choose your graph grackle as the default um, color space because that's how the image will be encoded for the CMYK when you send in the Illustrator file or when the Illustrator file goes through into PDF. Now, an interesting note here is you can set Illustrator, Photoshop, InDesign to these color profiles, but a handy way to handle this is in Bridge, if you set your um, color settings in Bridge, it's going to modify the entire uh, Creative Suite. So you can set it to General Purpose, Newspaper, American Prepress, or Internet. And that will change your entire color settings on the entire suite at one time. So if you're working on web stuff, you might go in here to Bridge, set up your internet settings and then when you jump over to your print jobs you go to the pre-press you do some newspaper ads you might set it to this and when you create your files they will all have the correct uh, CMYK conversion setting attached to them already. I'll go back to my uh, general uh, pre-press here. That has just applied everything. If I go back here this should be back to the um, US web coded swap, even though I'd set it to crackle before it converted it. So that is a short and long uh, version of uh, color management and what we do for this particular print job with uh, sending it off to Lawton's. We have to give them no conversion or no, no color profiles, but we want to give them consistent color. Otherwise, we end up with. Um, the possibility of having um, color that is quite different from piece to piece because the system won't know what the color was supposed to be in the first place. So that's the end of my story.